Hi there, uh, Pastor Kevin here at Covenant uh, with Pastor Jim. We have a future focus workshop coming up where we'll be talking about the, uh, uh, the, the plans that have been made and, and the conversations that have been happening and, and receive input. But, but I wanted to give Pastor Jim a chance to answer some of the questions that I've heard come up um, to really understand what's going to be happening and, and, and what's, how people will respond, how people can, can respond to what they hear. So the first question I've heard um, is how did the building co committee come into being? How did it go about starting its work? It started out first with the trustees looking at some of the issues we have around the building, uh, understanding that some of the folks that are a part of the church and some people from the community really cannot get to the entire building because of some handicapping conditions. Uh, while the sanctuary itself is accessible uh, with a wheelchair, um, although we don't really have a place to put a wheelchair once you're into it. Uh, and Wesley Hall is accessible, our restrooms on that level are accessible, and you can get to the office level in a wheelchair. You can't get between those two floors, and if you enter either the Kingswood or the Epworth building, you're faced with a dilemma. You need to go upstairs or downstairs, and certainly if you have trouble with stairs or, or in a wheelchair, that becomes very problematic to get around where we do many of our programs. Mm. So the trustees began looking at what we could do to make the building more accessible. And as they began to look at what the possibilities were, they realized that it was a bigger scope than what would be normal for trustees. And so they made a proposal to the church conference of 2015 mm. that we form a building committee and allow the building committee the latitude to look at the whole complex, the entire campus, and come up with some ideas to improve it. Uh, we didn't put handcuffs on them. We simply said, here's the building. Uh, you know what the ministries are we're trying to accomplish. What would be the best configuration within what we can afford uh, to make the facility the best it can be for what we do? Well, what were some of those, um, what were some of the challenges that, 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 that the ministries of Covenant, you mentioned uh, handicap accessibility, but I know uh, in, even in my own hearing, a few other challenges facing Covenant came up that the building committee started exploring uh, how to address. One of the first things that really began to come to our attention was that the Epworth building, which is a state-of-the-art facility, but the state-of-the-art is 1957, um, it has some hidden little restrooms that allow teachers in the nursery school to keep an eye on the classroom and make sure that the students that are just be really in the early stages of potty training uh, to have their needs attended to. Uh, if you have to use hallway bathrooms, you need extra staff, and it becomes mm -hmm. more awkward. But not every classroom has one, and so that was something that we put on the uh, agenda. Is there a way we could add restrooms? Could we add a sink to every classroom? Mm -hmm. Because certainly a lot of what we do in nursery school <laughs> has to do with things that are messy, and children need to have clean hands. As a parent of small children, I totally, <laughs> totally get that. And so that's a challenge that we have in the Epworth building, and it's not as simple as replumbing your house where you can get down in the basement and work the pipes. Mm -hmm. That building is built on a slab and much of the plumbing is underground and we're not exactly sure where it all is. Mm -hmm. So that would be a major project. We also very quickly realized that the Kingswood building, while it has wonderful space and a lot of space, all of it's not usable at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been in um, the music room or room two, three of that building, and there have been people in Fellowship Hall doing any kind of activity, you realize just how noisy it is. Uh, again, the, the construction technique was fine <coughs> at, in its time. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. They did the best they could at the time with the technology available. Mm -hmm. But essentially what happens is that floor is built in such a way that it vibrates. Mm. And so just a couple of children, uh, small children walking around, uh, create a drum effect, mm. which really makes it hard to have events happening in uh, Wesley Hall, or in Fellowship Hall, mm. and in the lower level simultaneously. And so when we engage the services of All House Jaffe, uh, who is an architect that specializes in nonprofits and in particular churches, we asked, is there a way we could solve that mm -hmm. problem? And they thought it was a relatively easy fix uh, to put in a floating floor system, mm -hmm. which would reduce that noise oh. level. That doubled the capacity of the building. Right, and, and on a weekly basis, almost every room 
where it is now that you can use at one time is being used throughout the week. So being able to double that space will make it available to and we have groups turned, and church groups. Right. We've turned down some events uh, where people have wanted to use our building because one level or the other is in use and they needed the other. A group that needs fellowship hall, um, when we have meetings going on downstairs, really isn't feasible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the square dancers <laughs> the sa club sachet comes to if two small children walking across the floor creates a drum effect I can only imagine what uh, a group of square dancers uh, could sound like <laughs> on the bottom floor now we do at times have the square dancers <laughs> and Narcotics Anonymous in the building simultaneously mm -hmm. um, because of the anonymous nature of Narcotics Anonymous they sort of deal with it they're grateful to have the space mm -hmm. but it is not ideal it is not as conducive to the conversation they need to have as it mm -hmm. should be. Right, right. Um, so there, so there's accessibility. Um, there's the sound issue. Uh, there's Epworth plumbing. Is it, was there anything else? I mean, the other big issue that has always been in the background, but we've never really known quite how to address it, is our parking situation. Years ago, um, our parking lot was. <coughs> semi-adequate mm -hmm. uh, in an era where there were large families, lots of kids, and big cars. Uh, a family would think nothing of piling three or four kids into the back seat, uh, mom and dad in the front, maybe somebody in between them, and bringing a whole carload of, of a family to worship. Unfortunately, or it's just a change of society, that nowadays people are not as willing to pile into mm -hmm. one big car and in fact, many people are driving small cars that wouldn't accommodate that many people. What we found is that each car represents, on average, about two people in the sanctuary. Our current parking lot will accommodate only 50 cars, mm. which really pretty much tops out our attendance at 100 before we find it necessary to use on-street parking. Mm. <laughs> Most people are aware that the streets in Springfield are not as wide as normal streets. Uh, parking cars on both sides and allowing cars to pass in the middle is really not possible. Uh, we have had a number of people lose side view mirrors because uh, they've been clipped uh, when somebody drove past. And it's also not as safe as we would like it. My father, for example, parks on Saxer Avenue when he's here, and I'm a little concerned about him when he takes the time to get out of the passenger seat, mm -hmm. or the, the driver's seat, walk to the back and get his walker out, and uh, then move forward. Mm -hmm. He's, I'm afraid, in the, the street longer than I would like him to be, and it, it's not as safe as I would like. If we could move some parking off street, that would be a wonderful thing. I'm just not sure that it's possible right. with our, our current arrangement. And so we've looked at possibilities. What would be the possibility of expanding the parking lot where do we expand it to? What are the implications for the township? We certainly need some help with zoning and whatnot. And we have talked to our local commissioner about what some of the possibilities are. And so we do have a proposal to expand the parking somewhat. Um, so that so with this future focus workshop, it's on, it, it's two Sundays from now, not this Sunday, but next on the 22nd. 22nd. Um, uh, 12 o'clock after the second service. Immediately following the service, we're gonna venture up to uh, Fellowship Hall and uh, we'll start out with a simple meal and uh, begin the conversation almost immediately. Okay. Uh, who will be a part of that conversation? And, uh, Hopefully you? everybody from the congregation will attend. Everybody's invited. But we also have two professional groups that will be represented. Mm -hmm. Horizons Stewardship. Um, Reverend Zip Long will be here with us. Uh, he's writing a feasibility study for us. Really, what can we really do? What are the possibilities for Covenant Church to move forward with this? Mm -hmm. uh, how much of this dream could we afford? And then the other person that will be here is uh, representing Althouse Jaffe, uh, Jack Althouse, who is the principal architect. Uh, he can help explain some of the things we've discussed. Mm -hmm. He can give us a quick overview of what's possible given our current construction mm -hmm. and what's not possible. Okay. So we'll have representatives of both groups here. Okay, great. Um, one of the one of the questions is if the building committee has been working on this for, for since two thousand fifteen and, and been looking at all of these issues and things like that. Um, I imagine they'll be bringing their solutions or what they think we should do to to this meeting. Um, does that mean 
everybody is kind of just listening to what the building committee thinks we should do, or, or will there be time for input from the rest of the congregation as they uh, as they go about, even including, hey, we think this is an issue that you didn't even consider kind of stuff. I mean, that really is the point of the future focus mm -hmm. workshop. We want input from the congregation. Um, the whole project has kind of morphed and changed as we have considered all the issues. And so we really do want as many people from the congregation to be involved because we know that the building committee has some good ideas, mm -hmm. but we may not have thought of the best. Right. Um, we've brought in experts to look at what the possibilities are. Uh, there may be other ideas out there that would solve <laughs> problems and help move us forward that we haven't even dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, what we have asked our architect to do is give us some rough sketches, rough ideas of what's possible. Mm -hmm. But we have not asked for detailed building plans because right. we're not to that point. Mm -hmm. We need the congregation's input before we finalize anything. Right. So the conversation that we have will be vital. Okay, that that's great. I know um, I know a few people asked about that, and and we want to make sure that everybody knows that their input matters. That that what they bring to the table, literally at that table and and, and around that conversation, isn't just. It's not just paying lip service to that, but no. but giving a people a real chance to... This is a real workshop. It's not a presentation of a done deal. Right. Um, nothing is set in stone. Okay. That's that's really good to hear. I know a lot of people want to know what the building committee has been working on, but they also want a chance to, to, to give feedback and, yeah. and, and, and give other ideas. And, um, and that the building committee may not have thought of, like, thought of, like you said. So um, that's really good. Is there... Uh, again, it's on uh, January 22nd at 12 o'clock following the second worship service. So anybody at the first worship service will come back and that's okay or, 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 or definitely be a part of that because we want as many people as possible. Right. Is there anything else you want to add that, that I didn't ask about that you might want to uh, throw out there? There have been a lot of discussion. Uh, one of the things we have thought about, and again, nothing is set in stone, uh, putting an elevator in between the Epworth building and no between Kingswood and the sanctuary, uh, because if we put it in that location, we could service both buildings. But we're also looking at potentially cutting a new <laughs> doorway in at the other end, mm -hmm. so that at least the first floor of mm -hmm. the Kingswood building would be accessible from the parking lot without a wheelchair mm -hmm. and without going all the way to where the uh, okay. new elevator potentially could be. Okay. Great. So a lot of possibilities. Again, nothing set in stone. We need to have that input, and hopefully we can perfect a plan that will help advance the mission and ministry of Covenant Church and help us to continue to change lives with Jesus. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed the conversation, and I hope anybody who's watching this um, uh, appreciates uh, some of the information that they're getting here that they may not have gotten through the letter that was sent out or the invitations or even our announcements during worship. Uh, this is a great opportunity to go in a little more, more depth about what people should expect on Sunday. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.